Hey, thanks for joining me today. What I'm going to show you is how to customize the item template for a new web dropdown control. I'm going to give you a demo so you know what we're building toward. So when, when you bring up the control, it looks like just a, a normal dropdown list. But when you click down on it, there's uh, obviously a number of different things you could do. But here we've set up the item template so that we've got a nice image. Um, we're styling the, the title of the book different than the author name and kind of going uh, that direction. You'll notice also that the header up here is, is styled differently as well as you can't click on the header. So it, it truly is a header in the list. And so you can choose the ones you want and, and go pro programmatically from there wherever you want to. Um, so let me go ahead and show you how it's done. So here we are in Visual Studio 2008. And I've got a couple controls pre-prepared for us um, just so that you don't have to watch me <laughs> typing, putting them on. Um, let's take a look at the source so you can see what we've got. We've just got a basic script manager. We've got the web dropdown. Um, not a lot's been, been configured on it yet, and it's bound up to an object data source, which is looking at the book repository to get uh, about 10 book objects. And the book repository is just, uh, it, it just creates fake data for the purposes of, of demonstrations. So what we'll do is, is come over to design mode again and then take a look at the properties of our web dropdown. And so the first thing that we would like to do is define the text field and the value field. Now the text field is the information that's shown to the user when they select something on the list. So that's basically when the, when the dropdown is collapsed, this is the information that will be shown. So what I'd like to do is show the title of the book. And for the value field, when, when something is selected, the value that we want to get back from it, I'd like to take a look at the ID. So this will give me back the primary key value of this item. From there, there's a few other things I'd like to do. Let's go ahead and turn off animations. And let's scroll up here and find the drop-down container width. And I want to set this to 300 pixels so that when we open up the drop-down list, that can be wider than the, the screen real estate that the list, the collapsed list, takes up itself. Okay, now that we've got that defined, let's go ahead and hop into the source and sort of flesh out the, the template a little bit. So if I come in here and say item template, what we can do at this point is use standard ASP.NET data binding um, markup in order to grab the information from the data item and bring it down into the template. So I'll use data binder eval in this, then this container.data item. And so we can take a look at the title. And, and what, what I want to do is put the title and then also the author name right next to each other. So we've got that. But that's not quite enough yet. What I also want to do is style this title a little bit different than everything else. So what I'll do is come in and just wrap this in a span. And uh, I'm going to apply a CSS class to this. And we're just going to call this uh, TTL for title. And put a colon afterwards so that you can kind of see some separation there. So that's the item template. And now for the header, we can just pop this open and say that we have a header template. And this one's really easy. Uh, we'll just create a div here. And we have a class which we'll call um, HDR for header. And we'll just say books. So really, at this point, all we need is some style sheet entries in order to, to give this the look and feel that we want it to have. So what I'm going to do is paste in some, some styles that I've got set aside here. And we'll take a look at them real quick. So the header, basically, we're going to increase the font size a little bit, pad it over, and give it a, a border at the bottom. I'm explicitly setting the width here to make sure that that border shows as the, the same width as the, the items underneath it. And um, then we'll, we'll bold the title and the header and all that good stuff. The, the thing that's maybe interesting about what we're doing with the title is that I'm setting a background image for the, uh, this, the, that little book icon. And then setting the padding to 30 pixels from the left so that the text won't hover over that, that image. Um, and so basically after that, uh, we should be able to run it and get something that looks pretty nice. So there's our list drop down. And now we have uh, each one of the items with the background image and the padding moving it over. We've got bolding. And really, the, the, the point here is to show you that the, the item template is wide open. You have access to the, the, the data member as it comes through, and you can do really whatever you want with it. Well, thanks a lot for checking out this video. And if you have any questions about what you've seen, please feel free to send me an email at cshoemaker at infragistics.com. If you want to take a look at the documentation for any one of our products, you can go to infragistics.com docs. And if you'd like to contact our support, you can go to infragistics.com support.
Thanks again for checking us out and make sure you check out the website where you'll find a lot more videos that will help you get started with the NetAdvantage tool set. Infragistics. On the web at infragistics.com.